Yeah. All right, I have a thumbs up. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to our meeting. This is our meeting of June 20th, our recess meeting for the last for, for June. We will first uh, call the meeting to order. We'll stand for a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by an invocation uh, by Alderman Sistrunk, and then um, a moment of silence. If you would please stand with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alderman Sistrunk, if you will. Loving God, we give thanks for another opportunity to do the business of our city, guide our discussions and decisions, and grant us your wisdom, peace, and grace. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate everyone being here this evening. Um, this will be, we've got a, one of our aldermen, Alderman uh, Brooks, is on the, the line, so part of what happens when we have someone who's calling in for the meeting is when we'll be doing a roll call vote on everything we do. So um, that'll just kind of be a point of order that we will deal with as we go along. So first item on the agenda is uh, approval of the agenda with consented items. Do we have any changes? Alderman Carver. Um, other than, I'll probably pass along for the art grant. Other than that, that'll be added to consent. The email you sent out this afternoon. Yeah, uh, yes, that's the ARC. Um, but ARC, that will be yeah. anything, so nothing? Okay. Alderman Rupp. I'd just like to add on to that that uh, we get an update on where we are with the wastewater. Like this is connected with the, is this connected to all of the other stuff we're doing? This is. The problems are happening at the wastewater treatment. Mr. Kemp, would you like to come forward, please, sir, and before we see if we can talk anybody to put this on consent, how about giving us a little background, please? Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board. Um, this is a, a grant application that we applied for back um, really last fall, and it's in conjunction with our main influent pump station. It uh, was last rehabilitated probably about 15 to 20 years ago, and it just needs some updates. It will affect, um, it is a part of our overall wastewater treatment process, but it will not uh, impact the other issues that we're having in the plant currently. Did you want to offer that as for consent, Alderman Monroe? Yes, I wasn't quite sure if he had or not. I don't believe he had. I let's let's I offer it for consent. All right. Any objections to uh, it was item uh, under the utilities department, item two going on consent. Any objections? All right. Seeing none, we'll place that item on consent. Any other changes, Alderman Rupp? No, ma'am. All right. Alderman Beatty, any changes? No, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman Brooks, any changes to the agenda? Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Alderman Sistrunk? No, ma'am. Thank you. Vice Mayor Perkins? No, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman Vaughn? No way, ma'am. Thank you. All right, thank you. So, do I have a motion to approve the agenda with the consented items as amended? So moved. I have a motion from Alderman Rupp. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Carver. If you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Rupp. Yay. Alderman Brooks. Yay. Alderman Bainey. Yay. Alderwoman Sistrunk. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, it is unanimous. Thank you. And with that, I'll read the consented items. First, we have consideration of the minutes of the May 16th, 2023 recess meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starville. Second, we have consideration of the minutes of the June 2nd, 2023 work session of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starville. Under Mayor's business, we have A, consideration of the approval of the lease agreement with the Dan Camp Family Real Estate LLC for the use of Edgerson Way right-of-way located along the west side and adjacent to the property is outdoor amenity space in the Cotton District. Under Department Business, Community Development, Item 1 is consideration of the Certificate of Appropriateness 23-03, request for Certificate of Appropriateness at 305 Greensboro Street in the Greensboro Historic District. Under engineering, I have consideration of approving the utilization of the 2023 Street Improvement Project Underage to fund the Sand Road, Soil Cement, and DBST Roadway Improvements Project. Two is consideration of approving the engineering department to advertise for the 2023 Soil Cement and DBST Roadway Improvements Project. Three is cons consideration of Neil Schaefer as the preferred consultant to provide professional engineering and design services 
for the Old Mayhew Roadway Improvements Project and authorization for the mayor to negotiate and execute an engineering consultant contract. Four is consideration of travel and training for Stephen Kaplan to attend PSMJ Project Management Boot Camp in Nashville, Tennessee in December at a cost not to exceed $2,750 with advanced travel. Five is consideration of approval of the change order number one to increase the contract sum by $8,540.17 to SGK Landscapes. Six is consideration of approval of a proposal amendment from Atwell Gent PA for additional services for the electrical materials package related to the Highway 182 build grant project. Under finance administration, we have two, which is acceptance of the May 2023 financials, and three is consideration of budget adjustments for fiscal year 2023. Under G, human resources, we have request authorization to hire Kagan McKinney as a police officer one in the Starkville Police Department. Two is request authorization to hire Lexi Anderson, I'm sorry, Lexi Henderson as a student intern in the city clerk's office. Three is request authorization to hire Nicholas Hollis as an intern for the Starkville Utilities Department. Four is request authorization to hire Jacob Mitchell as an apprentice lineman five, I'm sorry, six, in the Starkville Utilities Department. And five is authorization to hire Stephanie Walker as a residential driver in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. Under Information Technology, item one is request approval of a yearly contract from Microsoft Office 365 from Next Step. Two is request approval of a yearly renewal of antivirus software from Howard Technology for $8,700. Under parks, we have consideration to approve the purchase of $42,025 for 50 trash containers with lids from Trash Can Warehouse, the lowest quote. And two is request approval to accept withdrawal of the bid awarded to Uline on July the 5th, 2022, and award the purchase of two ADA metal picnic tables and 10 metal picnic tables in the amount of $14,100 from Uline, the lower of two quotes. Under police, item one is request approval for Officer Alexander Nash to assist the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, with drone training held by the Law Enforcement Drone Association, LEDA, from June 20th through the 23rd, 2023, in Nashville, Tennessee, to assist with aerial test method validation for NIST with costs to be reimbursed by drone responders. And item B is request approval for Corporal Matthew Lasker, Officer Diego Soto Meneses, and Officer Kyle Eves to attend Utility Inc. Car Camera Installation and Training Course to be held July the 11th at GPSO Logistics Supply in Colfax, Louisiana. Under utilities, we have number one, request authorization to approve the agreement with Garver for evaluation of Ernest E. Jones wastewater treatment plants aeration system in the amount of $27,500 and two is request authorization that the city of Starkville commits required matching funds of 20% to be derived from Starkville Utilities upon approval of said project by the Mississippi Development Authority, MDA, and the Appalachian Regional Commission, ARC, for the purpose of Starkville Wastewater Treatment Plant, WWTP, Influent Pump Station Rehabilitation. And that concludes the consent agenda items. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure. All right, under announcements and comments, um, I'm going to just announce a little early, and we'll, and we'll try to put it all out on social media, but we do have our July the 4th coming up, so and that's a Tuesday, so let me also say that the board will not be meeting on that Tuesday, which we would normally do so. We will be meeting on the following Wednesday, so we will be meeting on the 5th uh, in observance of the July the 4th holiday. So, But on, on that, we will have a pool party from 10 to 4, and uh, it will be a... a Free pool day for um, from out at Moncrief Pool, and then starting after that, there will be activities out at the Sportsplex, which will be bounce houses and food trucks, and then of course we will have the fireworks that start at dusk or, or in the evening around nine o'clock or so for uh, fireworks for July 4th. And uh, we did have a another soft opening out at Cornerstone this past weekend, which we understand went very well. It was a, a softball game that or a softball tournament that had about. 50 plus teams, and so it went went apparently very well, and we're very excited to continue to have Cornerstone starting to be what it's going to be. So we need some more good weather and dry weather, and uh, hopefully we'll get to that conclusion here very shortly. And other than that, I have no other comments. Alderman Carter, anything? I've got three. Um, one is just I know we're feeling a lot of questions on on this side of the table, but there's a lot of roadway improvements, a lot of overlays in town, and that's something that. Uh, it takes years in the making at, at times, so I want to say thank you all to each and every person on this side of the board and, and any of our department head 
and uh, individuals involved with that. It's a lot of good looking roads in town um, and they're getting to the finishing points on most of them. Second, uh, <clears throat> Mr. John Creasink passed away. Just want to take an opportunity. He uh, was a personal friend. His wife's Candy, they've been heavily involved in Starkville um, as a area arts council and long-term ambassadors. And Mr. John was a dear friend to everybody on, on, this, uh, on this board, I know, um, passed away. A couple days ago, just want to be with those fam that family and our thoughts and prayers and condolences and, and Jane, especially his daughter. But uh, to Mr. John and, and Miss Candy, uh, just always enjoyed Mr. John's conversation and all that he did. And then last, uh, just start thinking about budget meetings. I, my question was like, are we going to schedule any budget, budget meetings or cycles uh, to have meetings? This is probably the one year, in my opinion, that um, a lot of moving parts, cornerstone, a lot of things in the budget, a lot of big expenditures. I didn't know if we could start. Like, where are we at in the cycle? If that's something we could maybe request to start having some, some meetings and hear from our department heads and see uh, kind of where we're at and uh, what we need as a, as a town and, and things like that. So I'm Planning on scheduling them in July. First start of July. That, start that process. We've got to get the department heads. Getting that time. Budget, I always yes. like to thank Alderman Sistrunk. She kind of leads the charge with that with her professional experience. But yes, yeah, getting that time. I'm just starting thinking about it. And I'm starting to field a couple questions and I have a few questions. So I yield. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Rupp. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Beatty. Mayor, how many, what will the budget, the, the process be when we start in July? Do you, have you had any idea or any suggestions about how we go well, about starting the, the, the process? Then? Well, development of the budget. Planning on having the department heads get, receive their budgets for finalization by the 30th of this month, and then from there we'll look at them and schedule a couple of work sessions with the board. So we've got July and August. I want to have it adopted by the first meeting in September, which is the earliest we can adopt. So what you're proposing is two two meetings after the, it, the to after start the, with after the um, department heads propose their final budgets to be put. After they, after they go over the budgets that we've already had meeting, initial meetings with them as a part of quarterly and then looking at the new budget, once they take a look at the final budget that Mr. Webb has put, uh, Mr. Corbin has put together, then make sure that that's what they want and then we'll start going in, into it ourselves. Would that be, uh, uh, would that be something in July? It's July a special, August. special call in July. I uh, don't know that we'll necessarily do a special call, but we're certainly do it as part of in a work session. In what format would that be? Part of a work session. Would it be because of the nature of the budget, and the complexity of the budget, the questions we would have, things like that? We could, could we schedule or move the, our um, our work meeting to ten o'clock instead of eleven o'clock? Because that I mean, it, it might not take it'll, an hour, but it could. Well, it'll take an, it'll take a, a couple of hours. And if other stuff's so. on that that work meeting agenda, it's going it's going to start pushing into to our, our ability to, to get in and ask questions and have the department heads, you know, have the interaction stuff we need. I think we'll budget. have several meetings, so I would anticipate breaking it into, giving everybody time to digest things, which I think is it, important. Has the city in the past had special call meetings where they just worked on just the budget before? We have, over the last 20 years or so that, that I've seen it, we've done it both ways. We've had special call meetings, we've had regular work sessions, and we've had uh, regular meetings that, that's it's had opportunity for people to talk about it. But most recently, we've tried to do it in work sessions. Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I'd like to have us call some meetings and have just nothing going but just, just the budget to, to focus on. Uh, I don't know how the other uh, board members feel about that, but I, um, you know, if we're going to have two in August, I don't know how many in September, I mean, two, two in July and one in August or two in I mean, I don't know, but uh, I mean, how, how's the board feel? I mean, I'm amenable to whatever works for the rest of the board. We'll work our way through it. Oh. Okay. Anything else? No, I just, is there any way we can get something, maybe, I'll say definitive, but some kind of idea of what we might be looking at or something like that? Or, or will you send us something out of a proposal I'll send, with, I'll with, send with you a proposal. meetings and how we would care about that kind of thing? I'll send okay. you a proposal. Thank you. Okay. you Anything else? That's it. Thank All you. All right. Alwyn Brooks? Uh, no, no, thank you. I'd, I'd like to just flesh out a little bit more about the, the, the budget and, and how we are going to go forward with it this year. The, the department heads are getting their documents, um, I think, tomorrow, and, and then we'll give them a week and a half or so to look over it, make, propose any changes, make sure they're good with everything. comes back to the city clerk's office, and she and Webb will 
<clears throat> get that input into um, our general ledger software. Uh, that, that will take a few days as well. There's a holiday in there too, so <laughs> everything just takes a little longer than you, you might realize. From there, the next step I anticipate is getting reports to the board, um, a very detailed report, and then the summary report that you seem to um, find most useful last year, Alderman Beatty, that um, showed this year's budget, this year's expenses, and next year's proposed budget. And, and we're asking the department heads to provide explanations for increases and or changes in their budget from one year over the next. The, the board can then study on that a little bit. So when we come to the work session, we'll have had a chance to do our homework and, um, and maybe can be a little more streamlined in those work sessions. And from there, develop a final budget that the um, city clerk can advertise and um, we can start to have public hearings about. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor. No, Mayor, thank you. Alderman Vaughn. Have we had any bids back on the one, uh, 182 and Model of the King Corridor? On the I'm revitalization sorry. of 182 and Model of the King Corridor? Yes, have we have any bids back yet? Yes, we do. We're going to be studying those tomorrow. Um, they were quite large. So it'll, it's going to be something we're going to have to deal with. But we'll be, we'll be going over them tomorrow with, with some degree of specificity and uh, come back to the board with, the, with discussion. Okay, thank you. Yes, and sir. just bill grant related. Stuff. One more I'm question. I'm sorry, Alderman Beatty? Just, just bill grant related. What, yes, the bill grant. What what bids would be? The contractor's bids for them. We got two bids. We, last time we General contract recall, and bid or all Yeah, all. if you recall last time we didn't get any bids, and this time we had two. So we, the lowest one was $33 million. So, so there are things that we're going to need to do. Okay. Um, all right. Now we go to citizen comments. Anyone wishing to speak to the board, you have three minutes in which to do so and be timed by the city clerk. So. Uh, good evening to the mayor and board. My name is Alvin Tunnel Ward 7. Uh, to the mayor, to the police chief, to the fire chief, to uh, a sanitation. Uh, and to, uh, to chief, uh, uh, we're going to have to be kind of, kind of wise for uh, this time of year we have uh, three mental ill uh, diagnoses that are, uh, they kind of quit taking their medication and that is bipolar, schizophrenic, and psychotic. So that we just have to be kind of careful uh, with that. Uh, this time of year, they, they feel like they well and they won't take the uh, hair doll. And our, uh, uh, we're just going to have to be careful for his mental health. And that's schizophrenia, bipolar, and psychotic. Um, to, uh, to my understanding that uh, the 1650 to uh, our uh, next month, it will be $21 even. That's for the sanitation, if, land, if I'm thinking right. But our, uh, anyway, that's just some concerns ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak to the board under citizens' comments? All right, seeing none, we'll close citizens' comments. We have no public appearances this evening, but we have uh, several public hearings. The first item, Mr. Haviland, is a public hearing in consideration of SE 23-03, which is a special exception for townhouses on Guest Drive. Yeah, SE 23-03, this is a request by Charlie Morgan for the use of townhouses in a commercial uh, zoning district. This is located on the north side of Guest Drive. It's the last vacant lot on Guest Drive. And this is just a continuation of his Augusta Place condominium development, which in the image to the left, you can sort of see the groundwork being done in that image. <laughs> the proposal is using the same buildings, continuing on down the block. It's for two buildings with a total of 12 units and 24 bedrooms. 
and because it is the use of townhomes in a commercial district, a special exception is required and also to meet the additional standards, and he is meeting the additional standards. The request was notice to uh, 19 property, notice in accordance with UDC, 19 property owners of record were noticed directly by mail. A legal ad was published on May 28th in the Starkville Daily News, a sign placed on a property. As of this date, we've received one phone call uh, just asking questions about the request. As always, here's the criteria for special exception review and approval. At the June 13th meeting of Planning and Zoning Commission, they unanimously recommended approval of the request. If there are any questions. Any questions of Mr. Hamlin before? Is the applicant in, in the room? Do you have anything you'd like to add? No, just any questions you guys may have, I'll answer for you. Okay, all right. Well, we'll see, we'll see if there are any. Okay. okay. On and on, I see this you This structure is on Zachary Street. Put the next street over Lafayette. Uh, this this is on guest drives. This is off Stark Road. The the next request is the one on Jackson. Okay. Yep. All right. Anyone else before I open it as a public hearing? Okay. Now uh, we'll do so now. Open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak to this item now would be the opportunity. Anyone wishing to speak regarding this special request? All right. Seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing. Any other any other comments? Or questions? All right. I have a motion for approval from Alderman Carver. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Rupp. All right. Without uh, any further discussion, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Rupp. Yay. Alderman Brooks. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Alderwoman Sistrum. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Bond. Yay. All right. It is unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. All right, next item is a public hearing consideration of SE 2304. This is a request by Briar Jones on behalf of Caitlin and Andrew Tell for a special exception to allow for an accessory dwelling unit to be located in the rear of 306 South Jackson in a traditional neighborhood zone. This is the existing home directly across the street from the Over Street School. Here's the existing home. Behind it, there's currently a what used to be used as a guest house, but that use has been dormant for years. Um, what their proposal to do is to rehab the entire property and then turn that back into a guest house. And by turning into a guest house, it does meet the definition of an accessory dwelling unit. So this is the site plan that was provided by the applicant. The image in red is the existing guest house that they're wanting to convert back into a guest house. Uh, here's the existing house. Yellow, which is not part of this request, is just their master plan to propose additional structures. I believe one's a carport, the other one's like a shed shop building. The plans for the guest house do include a kitchen area, full bathroom, electricity, and is heated and cooled. Um, the existing guest house is approximately 1160 square feet. The proposal does not increase the size of the structure, but the existing structure is more than 600 square feet. And the reason that's significant in the additional standards, the limit to the size of an accessory dwelling unit is 600 square feet, unless it's removed as part of the request. So that's part of this request is to remove that additional standard. <clears throat> the request was noticed in accordance with UDC, 22 property owners of record were notified directly by mail. An ad was placed in the paper on May 28th, 2023, and a sign posted on the, on the site. As of this date, there has been no response to the notifications. And then, with, as with the other special exceptions, here's the criteria, a criteria. Uh, on the June 13th meeting, the Planning Zone Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Now, oh, any questions? All in all, did you have questions about this one, Mr. Uh, Hamlin? Uh, I'll hold my comments later. Okay, all right. All right. No questions, Mr. Hamlin? And I see the applicant here. Anything y'all would like to add? Okay, all right. Uh, in that case, I'll open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak? Yes, ma'am. When you do, if you would identify yourself, please. Yes, my name is Kate Coates Ware. Uh, I'm a resident of Butler Road, but my family owns house on Lafayette Street, which is the street west of Jackson Street. This is the second time that we've come to address this, this issue. I wasn't sure what was going to be put on the property. Our concern is the water that comes off the hill that runs down into Lafayette Street clogs up the drains, go across the street, and go into the yards of the residents on Lafayette Street. So my understanding that this is going to be a duplex and it will have parking, but will there be a lot of concrete that will just run off the property and down the hill and 
across the street. This is not a duplex, this is an existing structure that they're just rehabbing to bring back to a guest house. For one family? Correct. For one family, okay. Do you anticipate anything different as far as? This is what their proposal is, to convert the guest house back into a guest house. But as far as parking, you will have, I thought I heard you said parking. something about parking. It doesn't increase the parking. parking. There, are no, there is no increase for parking. Correct. So whatever is there will just stay there and nothing else will be added for parking? To my knowledge. Okay. Uh, our concern is the water that comes off of that hill down Lafayette Street, across the street, into the homes, into the yards of residents, and it does affect uh, the quality of life of the people who live there. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, no, you need to come up and, and provide us your name, sir, please. Charles Ware. Uh, that's my wife, Kate. The two yellow structures, what is that? That's two things that they had on their plan. I believe the one at the top of the screen, I think, is labeled as shed or a cardboard garage. A garage. And then the one at the bottom is labeled as shop. But so that, that is not part of the request or request for the building. But these are new structures. The building in the red is not a new structure. The two ones in the yellow, I believe, would be. But again, they're just requesting the one in the red. That's not a part of this current request, is that correct? Correct. That's not what we're considering this evening. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. What, let me, the slide before that was up real quick and you dropped it off. Can you put it back up, please? I didn't get a chance to read it. No, 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 the one where you had the mitigations and stuff. The correct here? No, that one. Mr. Ware, it's also on the, the page right there. You might be able to see it better from, from, the, from the seats. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll close it as a public hearing. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah. Alderman Vaughn, you had comments? No, ma'am, I say. All right. Thank Do you. I, okay. Do I have a motion? Well, I was going to ask one question before I make a motion of approval. Alderman, Alderman does this, Carver. Does this increase, increase the impervious, impervious surfaces at all? It, it does not. It's an existing structure. Thank you. I'll um, move approval. All right. I have a motion for Alderman Carver. Do I have a second? Oh, I'm, well, let me get a second, and then, then we'll go into a discussion. Do I have a second? Second, Larry. I have a second from Alderman Brooks. All right. Thank you. Now, discussion. Maybe Alderman Bates. I, I don't necessarily start. Somebody else has most to comment or something. Any, any other comments from any board members? Um, park. Will this change? Will the parking on this change from gravel to concrete or anything that where water is going? To, in other words, if it, if it, well, that's not that. part of the proposal as I understand it. Uh, the architect for the applicant is in the room. If Mr. Jones, Mr. Uh, if you're good, please, if you would come forward, please, so we can get you on the record. Thank you, and also be able to hear you from the microphone. Briar Jones, um, nice to see you all tonight. Um, this is simply uh, the beginning of a master plan so they can begin to think about where they may want to construct um, structures in the future. Um, it doesn't change the, the use of this site. They are proposing building a garage um, at some point. Um, I believe that the, um, the driveway up to the garage currently paved. Yeah, it's paved, um, and so this future garage would be at the end of that. Um, not in this proposal, but at some point, um, you know, they um, desire to have a swing pool in their backyard um, at some point. But those are different processes. You have different applications um, for those things, and they could be 10 or 15 years um, down the road. Um, currently, um, with this um, exception, they're just trying to um, rehabilitate um, an existing structure that already exists in their backyard. So there wouldn't be any new concrete in form of pavement that will be added with this renovation of this? Of this um, possibly very minimally. Um, but not a big driveway? It, no, no. There, 
there's a, a, a skirt of concrete um, in front of this to provide an area to put grills and things of that nature. I'm glad to see these folks buying and rehabbing this property. That's what we need to start. We need people to buy these homes and make them beautiful, and we're, we're glad to have you all in town. The reason I'm asking this question is I have seen the rain, and when we get big rains, I've seen water pour onto Lafayette, South Lafayette Street, pour over the street, overcome the street, and run under those people's houses uh, that, that live on, on the west side of South Lafayette Street, below the railroad track. I, I went out on the phone, I was down there one day, I think, or something, well, after one of those big, two or three years ago, and it, 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 can, it, can, over, it can compromise that street quickly. And we just, going forward, and I would say this to you all, that work with Mr. Jones and people try to, if you do increase, con, you know, impervious areas and things, work to try to mitigate that so that those folks won't get inundated with water or something, or, or water when, when there's their big rains. And, and, uh, but anyway, uh, I don't have any further questions. Thanks for coming up. Anyone else? All along. You say 10, 15 years from now they might do something different. Well, <clears throat> well they might. The notion there is that incrementally they will probably execute their master plan that we have here uh, presented for them over, you know, a period of time. Still the problem is, I, I mean, we see a lot of people would go look at Lafayette when we have a long, when we have a large rain. I wish some of us would go look at it when you do have a large rain. When you do have a large rain, everything on the right is flooded, coming off the hill. Everything on the right is flooded. Been there for many years. And that's why they're so particular, and that's why I'm so particular about adding more concrete. Because once you add more concrete, you know, a, yeah, we know, as board members, we know what it is. It's a quick flow. That's my concern. Yeah. And, that's the, and that's their concern, too. Yeah. All right. I know. Alderman that, Beatty, you yeah, Yes, ma'am, thank you. Mm -hmm. The townhouses were built on the south side of the Borden plant, turned vegetation into concrete and built it. And that's called that that turned a lot of water loose fast down down uh was it not Gillespie, what's the street that uh um, South Washington. Uh, South Washington over there uh on the west side of South Montgomery, what is that? Um, um below the border plant. Anyway, water pouring onto the, the um the playground at the school elementary school across the street Green on Street Green Street and in flooding in, in uh the Smitherman's house and stuff, you know that that and that's something that we don't know after the fact that that um, when, after something's been done like that, we're dealing with consequences of it, trying to figure out how we're going how we're going to stop this from happening, you know, going forward that kind of thing. So this is just an attempt, I think, on Alderman Vaughn's part and probably mine too, to try to get ahead of it to make sure that that that, that what someone does on South Jackson Street doesn't necessarily uh, negatively impact or affect people one block west on on. Uh, South Lafayette. We're, we're glad to have the, everything's being done, just that it be done in a way that it won't uh, affect somebody else uh, with, with additional water on the property. Mr. Hedlund, just for clarity, anything down the road, part of the master plan would still have to go through the process and be approved. So right now we're talking about this particular um, building. I haven't really dove into the plan as far as what future requests would be, but just speaking of the garage, from the location of it, it would probably be allowed to be built. The only question might be the shop area as far as being an additional accessory structure, um, but that's way down the line. Uh, so they could do part of that as what's shown with just a building permit. When, when pavement is done on property, like a, a parking lot in the back or something like that, is there, does, does there have to be a permit for that? I mean, that's not an improvement per se. It's not a building or structure, but is it? Is that would be more of a building department question, unless it's triggering something for site plan review or they've applied for the permit and that's just part of the permit. If you're just doing a land disturbance, I think there is a land disturbance permit, uh, but it doesn't have the same review, so to speak, as like commercial development. You know, somebody doing a patio in their back, backyard is not reviewed the same as Walmart expansion. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, we have a motion and a second. I need to get, uh, without further discussion, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Ruck. Yay. Alderman Brooks. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Alderwoman Sistrunk. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. 
Alderman Bond. Nay. All right. Uh, vote of five to two. The motion carries. Thank you. Um, and this, the other public hearing will be a second public hearing for amending the Unified Development Code. And Mr. Havlon. Um, it's the same for the most part as what was in the first public hearing. In red, I've highlighted the stuff that's been added. Um, basically some stuff for code enforcement action, just like procedural steps for issuing a violation. There was also some uh, registration and licensing inspection stuff added to the rental housing code. Um, there was also some stuff added, added to administrative enforcement of the rental housing code and then the appeal procedure in the rental housing code. Other than that, it's the same as the first draft. Okay. All right. Um, any questions? I was going to ask about that code enforcement action section. Well, what we're trying to do is allow ourselves to have a different process. Um, Mr. Huskerson is looking at it, the, uh, Judge Kelly was looking at it so that we can expedite it without creating a criminal penalty. It allows it just to be a civil pen penalty. So we're changing, changing some of that language so that we can go before municipal court without it being a criminal matter. So it's a civil misdemeanor type? I mean, what, what, what type of action is this? Grass? And yeah, grass. Uh, towing cars, um, the, the things that if you wait, you know, 10 days and then another 10 days to serve and then have to serve them personally, then by then the grass, the grass is either up here or, you know, it just, it needs to be streamlined if we can and so that's what we're working through. And this goes to the municipal judge, is what you're saying, court. versus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, right, to, but so it can be expedited, right? Made. I'm sorry. Versus going through. Okay. Yes. Yes, trying then, to expedite it I like that idea. within the... This uh, gives us more teeth from a code? Well, a, a quicker quicker response. Um, okay with that. There are some things that we can't, unless, if it's got a criminal penalty attached to it, if I say this wrong, get me. If it's got a criminal penalty attached to it, then you have to personally serve them. A lot of these places are not kept up because the owners are in New York or California or wherever. So if, if there's not a criminal penalty, we don't have to personally serve them, we can do it by mail, and therefore it can go through the municipal court system with some more alacrity and hopefully some success. Okay. So Quick resolution is what you're saying, yes. right? Potential. Oh. Yes. Mr. Burke, do you have any issues with that? I mean, no. no. I think it's a good plan. It's fine. I mean, I guess assessment. It's something other than criminal jail time. Sure. Okay. How are you? Okay. It was a better process for us because what we have to go through to wait so long to it didn't it, work. It, it, it'll show the process. Yes, right. that's the that's the effort. We're trying to work our way through that. And thank you. All right. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Let me open it as a public hearing. All right. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter, Mr. Turner. All right. Good evening. My name is Abby Turner. Uh, heard that we are catching up on our inspections. We are having them every three months. Uh, in my mind, see me right, uh, when we had the Brooklyn Garden situation and all that, we decided that we would uh, start inspecting these properties, and uh, do we still hold true to that or what? Thank you, Mr. Turner. This is this does not change the inspection process for the rental housing code. So, anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Seeing none, I'll close it as a public hearing. We'll be taking this up at our next board meeting for action. So, all right. Um, that leaves us with, I believe, just the claim stock. Move approval. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Carver and a second from Alderman. Rupp for the claims docket. If you would please answer yay or nay, is the city court called your name? Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Rupp. Yay. Alderman Brooks. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Alderwoman Sistrom. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Nay. Alderman Bond. Nay. All right. And that closes out the open, or the open meeting. We don't have an executive session, so if you will allow me to read the call for the work session, then we can... Uh, get a motion to adjourn. Uh, in accordance with the notices required under Mississippi Code Annotated 2541.13, the board will have a work session on Friday the 30th of June at 2023 at 11 a.m. The meeting will be held at City Hall, the second floor conference room located at 110 West Main. Notice should be provided of this work session within one hour of this meeting by posting such notice at City Hall. The notice will be made a part of the minutes of the board meeting. It will be an open public meeting in the city to start while the public and press are invited to attend. Do I have a motion to adjourn? 
They move. I have a motion from Alderman Carver to second. adjourn. Do I have, a, I have a second from Alderman Vaughn? Uh, if you would please answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Ruff. Yay. Alderman Brooks. Yay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Alderman Sistrom. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vaughn. Yay. All right, we are adjourned until um, Wednesday, July the 4th. It will be Wednesday as opposed to our normal Tuesday oh, yeah, meeting. So thank you, everyone.